<laughs> okay. Councillor Brunton, please. Uh, going back to um, I, the question I had for the volume, I think Councillor Columbus or Councillor Oliver asked the question. If we, um, can we get this straight here? If we take a revenue from the wastewater budget and apply it back, does it go carte blanche on everybody or is it prorated against industrial commercial uh, users? Maybe I've answered my own question based on consumption. Have I or no? Through Kathy? The, through the chair to you, Councillor Button. Um, the calculation, like I had mentioned before, the years would be approximately $100,000 right. that we, in the wastewater side of it, that we would have to reallocate. Um, it would be to the septic haulers, it would be to the um, residential users, the commercial users. It'll affect, it'll affect um, the basic charge, it'll uh, most likely affect the, the, volume, uh, the volumetric charge also. Uh, it'll be, based on that, there's a calculation that is completed that will affect all the uh, components that drive to, to actually determine how much we need to collect to make sure that we fully recover the cost for the wastewater system. So it is prorated against industrial, commercial, so forth, and it's not, yes, it it's not a flat rate. To no, it's not a flat rate. Okay. It's a very detailed calculation. Changes all the figures. Anyways, uh, my last question, I guess I'm going to put the county manager on the spot here. Uh, just what Councillor Black mentioned, you know, we have that policy of no out of, out of province travel, I believe it is. Um, if we approve this item in the budget for these uh, staff members to go to, uh, where is it again? New Orleans. New Orleans. Are we opening the door on our policy here for uh, all our staff? It could come, become very expensive. There are two elements or two responses to the question. Firstly, the monies are entirely coming from the rate budget, so these are not tax dollars. Um, so it's not conceptually we should be keeping them separate. Uh, so the monies to attend this conference um, comes from rate, rate payers uh, so, so that we can better deliver the rate service, direct connection. Uh, secondly, your policy is not that out of province travel is prohibited. Your policy is that staff are to come to you and ask for permission, which is exactly what is happening here in this instance. So firstly, I, I don't think you're setting a, I, I don't want to call it a bad precedent either. Like, this is the key fundamental conference for the keeping our drinking water safe industry, which of course is a statutory obligation upon, uh, respectfully, the act puts the obligation on you. You delegate it to staff, but it's you. Um, and this is our best chance to answer it. but. Beyond that, um, we'll only bring you those educational opportunities that we think, if they're outside of Ontario, that we think add a lot of value because obviously it puts it through the public lens and that is in itself causes a uh, cause for best judgment to be exercised. And in this instance, even with that, we think this is uh, best judgment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just on another note, I guess, maybe would it be, and I know possibly where we might be here next council meeting, I'm just wondering, is there a simple way staff could uh, look at any kind of figures? If uh, I, know I, I may be putting you on the spot here, but for if we make adjustments that we can have impact for different possibilities in the budget, or do you, will you need a lot of time to do some calculating? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to Councillor Brunton. Because of the timing and the preparation we need to get these rates to our third-party provider in order to get the billings out, any decision that's made on December 12th wouldn't directly affect the rates. They would, if we were earlier in the process, we could do those calculations and have enough time to get them to our billing provider. However, what we, how we would treat this particular issue is uh, if there's a decision made to adjust these rates, then we would treat it as a variance for the 2018 year. And that's any rate that appears within this budget, correct? 
through the chair. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Columbus. Just one last question. Uh, how do we bill the uh, Booth Harbor Enterprise in St. Williams? Is it industrial rate or is it commercial or? Uh, through the Chairman's Council, struggling a little bit with the question. Our rates are based on the meter size. They're not based on the use of okay, the... Okay, but St. Williams and Booth Harbor, we supply them with water. Correct, correct, and they have a meter, and it goes through well, the meter they, and the rate... They, so they have a meter, but what kind of a... What, what's a bill that? Industrial rate? Or it, th that, that's where I'm struggling. Sorry, I apologize. I'm struggling a little. We don't have, a, we don't have rates that, are, that say industrial, commercial residential it's based on your meter size okay um, let me just find the right so for in terms of water in the package 4-2 specifies the different um, meter sizes for wastewater and what you would pay in 4-1 shows you the different meter sizes in theory you could have a home with 150 millimeter water service I don't know why you would want that but you could have that um, so we don't specify based on your property use, we spe specify based on that. So for example, if we have a very, very large warehousing facility in Norfolk County that has three people working in it and really all they have is, is a, you know, is a washroom and, and a small kitchen, they would probably have a water service that's equivalent to a residential and they would pay based on a 15 millimeter water service. Okay. Thanks. Councillor Oliver. Oh, I'm sorry, Councillor Height. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm moving on to the appendices, the user fees, I guess. I'm looking at that. And my question through you to finance is, uh, there's a whole bunch of different percentage change variations in here. I'm guessing, like, why wouldn't you use the CPI or 1.7% across the board on a lot of these? Just, we, we know the prices go up, and yet there's some... There's a lot of bouncing around on a lot of the service fees where it seems like a lot more work than it should be. Um, through the chair to Councillor Height, uh, we did use uh, the percentage 1.7%. Um, you'll see different, uh, different um, percentages. Some of it relates to rounding, so it's the closest to the 1.7%. But the generally, um, we actually did the calculation 1.7, use that. Okay, but uh, okay, I'm on page 4-6, I guess, and 4-5, I'm assuming. We got uh, water turn on and turn off, and they're at 1.2% or 2, or 1.49. Like, we know that our increase at county here is 2% or whatever, but... You know, is, is it because you randomly picked a dollar? It was probably closest to when I did, sorry, don't have my calculator here. <laughs> so, but it would be, we used the 1.7 and it was probably rounded down to the dollar rather than up. Mm -hmm. Just so, so that it's for, for so ease of. Do you have all the figures for the user fees, like broken out, the, these type of things, the service work? Chair to Council, I'm not sure what you're asking. Um, okay, for, basically how much revenue we collect for every time we send somebody out or we charge a user fee, not the water or all the rest of it, but the actual work when they're going out there to repair a meter or turn a meter on and off. Is, is that in this report somewhere? To the Chair to Council, right? the actual, um, no, it's not in the report, but within the budget, we do have the revenues broken down by the number of occurrences, um, an estimate of occurrence for water turn-ons times the rate that we're proposing and the revenue collected in there. Um, as far as the breakdown, how we came, how the um, original or the full cost recovery amount was determined, no, that's not also, it's not, the details are not included in this budget. Okay, thank you. Um, my next question, Mr. Chair, is 4-8. It looks like the Port Rowan water treatment plan is getting some surface treatment of the laneway at the water tower. Thankfully. Now, but I'm wondering, because it's the entrance to a park, shouldn't that be split with the community services division? Because without that road being there, you can't actually get to the park. Through the chairman to council, um, these are these are the ones that were discussed at the capital budget process. 
these are the projects that were talked about that. And this was just into the, sorry, this is the, just the access to the water tower. That's where we, it's been our, it's been the, the complaints that we've been receiving are all about the county vehicles. Right, I've received all of those same complaints, I'm sure. Yes. But we also have a building right there and we also have, I don't know, the remnants of a ball diamond that's back there. I'm not sure how you're going to do half the road and why you wouldn't do the whole road the, since we have the crew there. The intention was to do the road to the water tower. If community services has the funding, we could certainly add that on to it. Okay. <laughs> So okay. I'm, 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 the intention was just to the water tower because that's the predominant use. Okay, thank you. Okay, Councillor Oliver. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. My last question to Kathy at this point, actually sort of two-part question, but overall the water and wastewater budget is increasing by 1.9%, correct? That's correct. And overall, the average cost to a residential consumer in particular is going to increase by 1%. Correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you very much for that. Then, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I don't know whether you're ready for it, but I would move the motion at the on page 1 of 14 of the financial report, but with a proviso. And, and I, I'm, I realize I'll maybe be on shaky ground. The county manager will tell me if I am. But we know perhaps next week we're going to be discussing one particular rate. And should a decision be made in any way to change that rate in 2018, this motion that we have here in this report, it's only a recommendation until next week anyways. So presumably, we wouldn't be contradicting ourselves at that point. And I'm seeing the deputy clerk nod, at least that's part way. In other words, Mr. Chair, should we do something next week on that one rate, will we have prejudiced ourselves tonight by approving this budget should we do so? Or do we do need to delete the one item from the motion for tonight? I, I would suggest uh, not adding the, you may well, I don't know what next week will bring, presumably none of us do. Uh, so I would pass whatever motion I wanted to pass now. That may well be what staff suggest or might be something else, but assuming it's what staff suggest, I would pass it as is and uh, let next week fall where it may. In the event you go through a reconsideration, uh, we'll cross that bridge, but you'll be able to undo in not that I'm encouraging that, but in theory, you could at that time. So, Councillor Oliver, you have moved that we. Re Thanks. Thanks very much, Charlie that the uh, water wastewater modeling software upgrade that's referred to at an expense of $35,000 in 2018 be deferred for one year. I should have the correct page reference and I don't have it, but I think staff know what I'm talking about. Oh, the new, new budget initiative, that's what it is. Thank you very much. Uh, for water and wastewater distribution and collection models as at a proposed expense of $35,000 be deferred for one year as part of the overall motion. Okay. Maybe you have to deal with that separately first. That? I don't know. Okay. All right. We have a motion on the floor. Mayor Luke. Seconder. Yes. Okay. All right, further discussion. People had their hands up before the motion, so I'm going to allow this, these questions. Councillor Brunton, you have spoken seven times on this particular seven. item. This will be the last time. That's all. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Chairman. I apologize. I just had one quick question to James or Kathy. Hello. Hello. Uh, could you, uh, do you have an outstanding balance of the non-collectibles for water or water rates? Do you get that monthly? And if so, could we get that amount up to date for next week? Through the chair to Councillor Button. Um, with the new contractor, I'm not sure exactly what information that we do have, but what we will do is um, work with Public Works um, to find out what information we can um, bring forward to you next week. 
Thank you. Mayor Luke, you're up. Well, Mr. Chair, thank you very much. Uh, I just want to speak in support of this budget this year. I know that if you are a water user and payer, you would probably say to me, a 1% on my residential is not a good budget. If you reduce it, that's a good budget. I get that. But when I look at page 13 of 14, I look at the residential bill, and I see that over the last 10 years, we have averaged over 4% a year increase. This year, it's 1%. So we're headed in the right direction. It's 75 cents a month on your water bill, and it's 75 cents increase. So I think it's, um, I think it's doable, and I will support it, and I want to say that I recognize we're going to raise an additional 1.9% in money overall to operate all of our users, whether it's commercial, residential, industrial, but I uh, think the 1% on the residential is certainly in line with increases that we have to, to assume. I want to also just finish by thanking Kathy for her presentation here this evening on this budget and her knowledge and work and all of staff that have put this together again. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Councillor Geisens. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to Lee Robinson, I'm on page 48, 4-8, sorry, funded capital expenditures. My question is this, what is going to happen in Cortland? Uh, we still have problems with pressure. Is there anything in the budget somewhere to fix that up? Through the chairman to council, um, the situation with regards to pressure in Cortland is being addressed through the Integrated Sustainable Master Plan. There is currently money previously approved in previous capital budgets that can be used to do that, so it's not included in this budget because that money already exists. I understand pipe is out. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> there will be a future memo coming about each water system and where the upgrades are and how it all ties into the integrated sustainable master plan. We're going to provide that to council on a community by community basis. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councillor Wells. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I certainly will be supporting Councillor uh, Oliver's motion, but I just wanted to ask a question. He then added something that we would reduce the budget, or Woe's budget, by I think $30,000 on that one item, 35000 could I ask uh, Ms. Robinson what would be the uh, negative uh, result of that suggested uh, deletion, if you don't mind? Um, through the Chairman to Council, I believe that the money that um, Councillor Oliver had suggested be deferred for one year was to do the models for that, um, we will continue to operate as we're currently operating, which is with the consultants doing it at us paying the consultants. And there is a payback on it. And if we defer it for one year, it simply means that um, we won't see the payback for an extra year, but it's not going to have an, it's not going to have any negative impact on our operations. And the payback wouldn't be $35,000, uh, would it? I mean, how much do we pay the consultant now? Um, it, we figured out that it will take about 18 months in savings from paying the consultants in order for us to get that back. So, mm -hmm. Councillor Black, please. Chairman, yeah, just a, a question on page 4.2. What is the actual, at the top, uh, holding tank waste and septic waste? Uh, what's the actual full cost recovery rate for the holding tank waste and for the septic tank waste? There was a number for that. These these rates here are still subsidized, are they not? Through the um, chair to Councillor Black, um, the septic waste is at the full cost recovery, and if you may recall, um, when we did this study, the recommendation was to, for both the holding tank and the septic to uh, septic rates to be at a combined rate. So the septic rate is at the combined rate in the hundred percent or the cost recovery rate that was calculated. 
Yeah. In the holding tank. We uh, Mr. Chairman, I got to call a point of order here. I apologize for doing it. Mr. Chair, we have established the holding tank rates are not for discussion this evening. They're off the table with the possibility they could be reconsidered next week and discussed at that time. We've shut the deputation down. Are there two sets of rules, one for the deputation, one for council? If the reconsideration doesn't go through next week, Mr. Chair, there's no discussion at all until next June on holding tanks. So why are we talking about holding tank rates? We don't even know if they're going to be discussed next week. Thank you. I would concur. I'm going to bring the discussion to an end and let's vote on the issue. You've heard the motion as amended. All those in favor? Anybody opposed? That is carried. Thank you. All right. We are now going to go to consent items. Um, a, B, C, and D. A and B and D will be dealt with as staff reports, leaving C, which is a staff report PW 17-91, Bell Mobility Inc. Small Cell Technology. Could I have a mover to uh, move this thing along? Councillor Luke, seconder. Councillor Geisens, all those in favor? That is passed, thank you. All right, staff reports. All right, let's go to uh, PW 17-89, uh, PWE 17-63, Basil Avenue, Simcoe Reconstruction. Ms. Robinson. Um, before you this evening is the report for the award um, for the construction project. Um, Council will recall that this one came forward previously. Staff recommended that it not be awarded and that we felt that uh, it made more economic sense to do some minor changes to it and send it back out. I'm pleased to say that it's now come in under budget with sufficient number of budget or sufficient number of bidders. It fully complies with the purchasing policy and we're asking that it be awarded this evening. Councillor Black. Uh, certainly I support that and, and move the, the motion and if you get a seconder if I could speak to it and ask a couple of questions. Yep. Councillor Columbus has seconded, go ahead. Okay. Um, just interested to know through you to Lee, on what side of the road would it be the east side or the west side that a sidewalk will be established? Because there, there, there are no sidewalks there right now. Uh, through the chairman to council, I don't have the detailed drawings and I probably looked at them lot before they went out to tender last time. Um, so I apologize, I don't have that information. I can certainly um, get that and provide that to council. Okay, th that's fine. i take it later. Um, do you know, is the, the width of the road going to be the same or wider? Uh, through the chairman to council, I, again, I apologize. I didn't okay. review the detailed drawings before we came for this because it was just a standard award report. Um, we can certainly bring forward any kind of that kind of information if council wishes to have that. Well, I wouldn't mind knowing it. So if, if the rest of them want it, I just wanted to know if the road width is the same or wider and what side the well, sidewalks the, on. The right, the right of way width won't change. Um, okay. The asphalt driving surface potentially, we can certainly review the detailed design, but we don't usually do that as part of an award report. Uh, uh. And uh, uh, yeah, I see this included the start and finish dates. I appreciate that. And um, on the on the budget uh, this time around, Somebody if I'm not mistaken, it looks like you're just about dead on on your estimate for the actual budget. No. So is am I reading that right? Uh, through the chairman to council, right. yes, you are. Well, I'd, uh, I think you need a, staff needs a pat in the back for that number. Um, maybe you can give it to them, <laughs> including yourself. Pat yourself on the back. <laughs> okay. Councillor, Mayor Luke, did you have your hand up? Yes, and uh, just quickly, uh, Councillor Black uh, touched on a couple of mine with the uh, July start with school out uh, for the two months gets the bulk of the work done, which I think is going to be appreciated. Um, secondly, 
Mr. Lee, Lee, I couldn't remember what that high estimate was last year that came through that tender. I couldn't find it in here. Did you mention it? I didn't see it. Do you uh, remember what it was? I know we didn't take long to scrap that one. Through the chairman to council, um, by retendering this, we saved approximately three hundred thousand dollars. Three hundred thousand, and Mr. Chair De Lee, again, I would take that nothing has really changed. The same drawings are here. We'll get the same finished product. It's just that it's timing on the tender. Correct. Um, through, through the chairman to council, that is correct. Um, as staff had indicated, sometimes the timing um, makes a huge difference, and we didn't feel that we got appropriate value um, the last time that we had. Uh, issued it and we strongly recommended that and we're pleased to see that exactly what we had anticipated happened to happen. Thank you very much. Councillor Columbus. That was my very question, Mr. Chair. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Oliver. Thank too, Mr. Chairman, and the only thing <laughs> I'll add to it is obviously sometimes timing is everything, as Lee and others have said, so thanks to staff. Anyone else? Okay, I have Councillor Black. Moving and Councillor Columbus seconding. All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Going on to uh, Norfolk Street at Deku Road and Simcoe signalization. Uh, through the Chairman to Council, before you is the report with respect to Norfolk Street um, at Deku Road here in Simcoe with respect to the traffic signals and the timing. Um, I'm not sure exactly what transpired in the past, but somehow there was a council resolution with respect to the timing. And as such, staff no longer have the authority to be able to make modifications to the intersection to suit the changing traffic needs, et cetera. And so the purpose of this report effectively is to let council know that we're going to be making some changes going forward and to now delegate it back to staff so that we can continue to tweak it as we do all of our traffic signals to allow them to function better. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Mayor Luke. I would like to move the recommendation in staff report 1794. Thank you. Councillor Black. Um, Do we have a seconder? I, yeah, I'm not seconding it. Councillor Oliver seconds. Go ahead, Councillor Black. Yeah. Okay, yeah, some questions on that. It, you know, I've had a lot of uh, concerns about that. Uh, signalization and um, uh, I've posed the question before and I'm wondering why can't we do like we've done in other areas there's four lanes there and if you did three lanes and three lanes on either side like one through lane um, then you've got a left turn a straight through and a right turn lane like even in downtown Simcoe we have that why can't that situation be done for um, Deku Road. Through the chairperson to council, um, there's lots of different ways to address different things, different concerns, sight, line, sight lines, access, etc. The main purpose of this report is to allow staff to make some appropriate changes to that intersection to make it work. There is um, a lot of different things. We The report alludes to what we call a road diet, which is changing a lot of the patterns on the road <coughs> so the traffic flows better. We would like to make um, a significant number of changes at this intersection over the next little bit, but unfortunately the way the last resolution read, staff don't have the authority to do that. This is giving staff the authority to effectively go and do what, what, what we're able okay. to do and improve that entire situation. Anybody who's driven through that intersection more than two or three times um, feels the frustration that, okay. of driving through that intersection. So this, this, isn't, this report isn't saying what you're going to do. You're going to come up with what you think is the best thing to do? Um, I, through the chairman to council, there's, there, this is going to be sort of an integrated approach. We're going to do some immediate changing to the timing and how the, how the signal works, as well as look at doing some changes um, to the actual driving surfaces in terms of line painting. Later on in 2018, we're going to see how it goes. This will give us the ability to change the timing as necessary and try and do different phases if that's necessary as well. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure that staff are aware of the, uh, the alignment of the, the, the mall, like when you're coming out or going in, it's, you've really got to go slow because it dips down and you come back up, and really that affects the traffic as well. But here it says that um, you want the authority from council. I don't really mind that, but I still wouldn't mind knowing if you're making 
a change that uh, uh, once you make a change that you do notify us through a memo. Is that possible? Uh, through the chairman to council, I, it, we can certainly do that if we're making a significant change. Um, but we are always tweaking and modifying <laughs> traffic signal timing, et cetera, and that to having to report every time we modify something by two or three seconds or change it or lengthen it would cause an additional amount of, of, amount of work in order to do that. I would suggest that when we're going to make significant changes, i.e. we're changing the line painting, we will certainly provide a memo to council, but when we're doing minor modifications to the timing, that that we wouldn't typically provide that information to council. Okay. Well, and the reason I ask that is because I'm sure, well, I'm not sure about the rest of the councillors because most of the traffic lights are in Simcoe. I think there's some 21 in Simcoe and what is, is there one in Waterford and, uh, you know, so most of them are in Simcoe and if there's something different about a light or whatever it is, we hear about it. I'm sure you hear about it, Doug, or the, the mayor hears about it. And <laughs> excuse me, a lot of times, you know, I can't answer the question. I have no idea. So I wouldn't mind if there are some kind of major modifications uh, to be done that were notified through a memo, if that's okay. So noted. Councillor Height. I'll pass. Thank you. Councillor or Mayor Luke. Well, Mr. Chair, I support this 100%. The motion is pretty simple. If we approve this, they're going to get rid of the advanced turn lanes. Well, the signals, the indicators, they're useless. For those that don't know that intersection, I use it regularly. North and southbound have two lanes each. The outside are straight through. The inside is either straight through or left turn. So yesterday I pull up, I'm the first one in the left lane. There are cars on two lanes going both ways. The green arrows turn left, come on. Nobody's going left. So what are we sitting there looking at each other for? For 15 seconds, I give up. It's ridiculous. Um, somebody has to make a, a, a left turn there. I expect they're in the left lane and they're waiting till the traffic's clear. So the, the motion is so simple. Get rid of the left turn indicators. We pass this, that'll be done. And staff's gonna further look at timing of the lights, especially the fact that we're gonna do some work at Evergreen Hill Road. It's pretty simple and it's, it's, it's a big, I, I've been getting complaints about those advanced greens. If nobody's turning left, why do we need an advanced green? I like it, thank you. Okay, that's the end of the speaker's list. Mayor Mayor Luke has moved. Councillor Oliver is second that we deal with this Taku Road signalization issue. All those in favor? That is carried. Going on to phase out of vacancy rebate program. Who's got this? Mr. Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this report is as a result of a report that was presented to Council in September uh, FS 17-36. It has to do with Bill 70, which enables uh, municipalities to phase out the vacant unit rebate uh, program. Uh, so Council endorsed uh, going through the process to phase this out. There were certain requirements by the province uh, in order to phase it out, uh, one of them being uh, public consultation. Um, and so we did that, we had public meetings, uh, we sent uh, correspondence to the local BIAs and boards and so on and so forth and we have not received any uh, negative feedback for uh, phasing out this program. Uh, so I take that as a positive sign. Um, the program will be phased out over uh, three years, and when I say three years, uh, the 2018 f uh, year, we will be accepting applications for that in 2019, and then for the 2019 year, uh, there, we will not be uh, accepting any applications. Uh, the approximate dollar value 
that we will be savings, uh, saving on the tax levy uh, with the phase out will be 41,000 for the 2019 levy and then another 41,000 estimated for the 2020 levy. Um, so with that being said, if there's any questions or clarifications from council, I'd be happy to answer questions. Thank you, Councillor Columbus. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the uh, betterment of downtowns, I think this is a good move to eliminate this uh, program as presented in the recommendation. I attended the Chamber of Commerce meeting and the BIA, and they were quite supportive of this taking place, so I will move the recommendation. Thank you. Seconder, anybody? Councillor Brunton? Yes, you may. Go ahead. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, just so I'm clear, uh, uh, James, in our downtown, and I refer to Simcoe right now, um, are many or are quite a few of the vacant uh, commercial areas down there? Do they use that program? Is it fair to ask? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I'm not aware of how many applications we do receive. Uh, I can refer to the original report. We had some of those stats in there. And what I do remember is it was a, fa it was a fairly um, repetitive application. A lot of the applicants were repetitive in nature. So um, the, the incentive to, uh, of that program didn't seem to be working because it was the same people using it over and over and over. Um, but um, as far as the number of uh, vacant units, I, I wouldn't be able to answer that question. Okay, yeah, we did, we, I, I know at the BIA we had a report on the vacancies, but I'm just, uh, you know, it, it has the potential to do a few things down there, and that maybe uh, maybe is good, some may be bad, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Black. Uh, <clears throat> well, you know, I did sit on the a founding member of the Ontario Business Improvement Area Association, and they do support the removal of this. And uh, um, I guess the, a, lot of, a lot of the problems come from abuse of the program, um, but there is a legitimate aspect to it, and there are some people that use it legitimately. I can tell you that I did. Um, when uh, I had a vacant vacancy, um, I didn't want it to sit there vacant, but it takes time to find a tenant. So and during that time, that time period, um, this, this helped, okay? Uh, the problem I have, maybe the program isn't working in the downtown. It's called a vacancy rebate. And if you take a look at the number of vacancies, uh, they've been reported before. Um, they're greater than they ever have been and there's even more now. So if you eliminate this problem that's supposed to be dealing with a vacancy problem, then what do you replace it with? This, this is all in isolation of saying this particular program does not work. But in the bigger picture of a downtown problem, which we all know we have, what do you do? Well, what's, I see nothing that, here that says eliminate this but we're going to do something else over here that would um, deal with the problem of vacancies. There's nothing there. So, uh, I mean, I could support this because I think overall uh, there may be abuse. It may, it may be redundant. But certainly I would like to see something that address, actually addresses and deals with filling the empty spaces in the downtown. Thank you. Councillor Height. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to finance, when, when we do this, obviously we're going to have more revenue. Where is that revenue going to be? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, we won't be having more revenue. We'll be saving on the, uh, the amount of money that we would have to refund to the owners of these properties. So they pay you and then you send them back a check? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, the way the program works is if you are fully uh, current on your taxes, uh, you would apply for a vacant unit rebate, and then we would, in the application, uh, we receive it, for example, we would receive the applications for the 2017 year by, uh, by the end of February, and then we would process it, and then, yes, we would cut a check back. Okay, so uh, during the phase-out period, uh, on the next few pages, there, there talks about the Community Improvement Program. 
Is there any suggestion of yours to move this money into that program to help renovate the downtowns? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, we would see the decrease in expenses for the 2019 budget year and uh, perhaps uh, that is something that we can look into. Uh, perhaps Mr. Baird uh, could speak on some of the grant programs we offer currently. Um, however, uh, as far as taking the reduced expenses and moving it over to a grant program, that no, we have not uh, discussed that yet. Okay, so then for that, how come the community improvement grant thing is all on here, but there isn't a possible suggestion to maybe transfer those funds? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, when this program was first introduced that it would be phased out, it was an overwhelming uh, um, agreement with most municipalities that they would phase it out. It was, it was, it was pretty much a no-brainer. However, one of the questions and concerns was, and Councillor Black alluded to it, is uh, well, what kind of incentives are out there for, for property owners with, that, that, are, that have challenges? So that's why these grants were included in this report. Uh, in order to provide other incentives to property owners if they want to uh, Im improve their property or, or, or things of that nature. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Councillor Columbus has moved the recommendation in the report. Councillor Brutton has seconded it. All those in favor? That is carried. Okay, let's go on to page uh, 91, Insurance Renewal Program 2018-2019. Who's got this? Mr. Stutchenkov? Please. Uh, thank you very much. Through you to Council. Um, just as a brief uh, summary, November 7, 2017, Council passed Report EBS 17-16 which authorized the continued exception for uh, Frank Cowan Company Limited to provide insurances for 2018 for us, uh, as well as approved an RFP process to be started in 2018 for the 2019 year uh, process. Uh, as part of that, uh, this particular report was going to come forward and outline specifically what the premiums would look like. And as a result of the um, in-camera decision, um, the second recommendation, the one that reads the general insurance program be renewed with Frank Cowan Company Limited in the amount of approximately. So that amount is a result of the in-camera decision uh, as a result of deciding to increase the deductible limit. Um, and the amount is confidential and kept in camera. But the new amount of the premium would be $1,449. Uh, $1,449,013 plus applicable taxes. Now, there's one additional item um, that Shelley Darlington will speak to in this report, and that is the facility uh, user solution, which is part of the insurance program as well. Thank you, and through the chair. Uh, in the report, staff have outlined um, that a report will be coming forward in January of 2018, outlining an option for council to consider for a facility user program through Frank Cowan Company to provide options for users to purchase insurance directly for the duration of their rental. Um, that report is uh, being scheduled for January. Uh, however, I understand there is some interest from Council to consider that matter uh, this evening. Uh, we have received some information from Frank Cowan as late as last week that couldn't be included in the report. Um, so I do have a, a bit of information to provide to Council if you do want to consider that this evening. Um, the implementation of a user facility pro program requires a deposit premium to be paid. Uh, the premium um, is... Uh, $10,261, and the deposit is drawn uh, down on each time a user chooses the insurance option. At the end of the year, an audit is completed, and we either, either a refund is given to us or an invoice is issued. So it doesn't actually cost the county any money because we charge the user groups directly for that insurance program. The um, program is separate and distinct from the county's program, so any claims arriving, uh, arising from that program doesn't affect our claims history. 
Um, and we have a couple of examples if council does want to consider that this evening. For example, a pickup hockey league with 26 to 50 players, um, it's about $10 per hour uh, for them to opt into the insurance program with Frank Cowan. So if they rented 25 hours of ice during the ice season, it would be $10 per hour. So they're looking at about $250 of annual premium that they would pay for that use. Uh, we also provided another example for public skating, and it's similar, $10 an hour, that they would pay in that premium amount. And then finally, we looked at a hall rental, for example, and we looked at a scenario where alcohol is being served. There was 100 individuals attending that function, and it was for three hours, and it's approximately $40 per hour, or they'd pay $120 uh, for insurance coverage for that three-hour uh, point in time. And uh, if there's any further clarification required around uh, the facility user program, I'm happy to speak to those or uh, be directed to continue with the report in January. Okay. Mayor Loop. Well, Mr. Chair, just a couple of things. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Cridlin wishes to speak at all. He uh, certainly brought this to my attention yesterday. I've had in the last week two people email me and are not happy that they have to run off. One has actually come back to me today by email and said, their insurer will not insure them for an hour of ice on a, on a municipal arena. I think what Shelley is saying, what staff is proposing, and this council may want a staff report. Personally, I don't, based on her numbers, I don't need a staff report. What she is saying is that the county can look after the insurance coverage for a 10, $1,261 a year upfront fee. We can get that back through our rentals. And I think, although I can't speak for everyone, but some I've talked to said, I'd gladly pay an extra whatever. I don't know what the, uh, how much it was for, uh, I'm sorry, $10. through $10 for the hour. 20 people on the ice, 50 cents. I think people are much rather pay that when they write the check, know that they've got their insurance coverage. They don't have to run back, get, contact their insurance. I think this is the solution. I'm ready to, um, and I'll see what the rest of the council thinks, but I'm ready to go with this. If somebody doesn't want to rent the ice and doesn't want to pay the extra 50 cents dollar a person, they don't have to, because they're probably not going to use it anyhow. They got to be insured. That's, that's the rules. So Mr. Chair, I, I, I'm just saying that I don't need a staff report I think this is the answer. Want to make it a motion? Well, I, there may be some more questions, discussion. Right. Thank you. Councillor Brunton. Well, I, I may, correct me if I'm wrong, Shelley, but I did some calculating here. And uh, if you said up to 50 players on a, in a league, say, that rent, let's say they rent uh, three or four hours a week, for I think the average is what about 26 weeks in a season. That comes out to 800 to 1,000 dollars extra for that league, at least the way I calculate it. And if that's the case, I think it's cheaper for them to get their own insurance. So will it be an option for them to get their own insurance? Uh, through the chair, that's exactly correct, Councillor Brunton. We have many users already that provide uh, insurance certificates, regular yeah. user groups. Um, this is a form if they don't want to go to their home ownership policy because they're renting it for an hour. It's always been a requirement in Norfolk County to provide proof of insurance. So this is just another option. They don't have to opt in, but if they aren't providing an insurance certificate, there's, there's a cost associated to have the program added. Okay, and what, if they pay the, <coughs> excuse me, the $10 an hour or whatever works out, what coverage do they get for that? Through the chair, I'm actually going to ask uh, Tracy Borland. <coughs> she can speak to uh, the details of the program in that manner. So they'll get a commercial general liability policy, and that will include non-owned auto as well as tenants legal liability coverage. Sorry, can you speak up to that again? 
so the renter or the user will receive a commercial general liability insurance policy yeah. and included in that will be tenants legal liability a non-owned auto policy and provide additional insured status for norfolk county well it's, uh, i'm not a, an insurance person but uh, if one of those players that's gets hurt breaks their leg or uh, uh, they are they covered with some kind of uh, medical coverage with that or gets their teeth knocked out or how does that work? No, so no coverage. Be, there'd be no medical coverage for that. Oh, it's all just to protect the municipality. It is to protect the municipality. Yeah. Well, personally speaking, uh, we pay one and a half million for insurance, quite frankly. Um, now we got to pay more to get the same. Uh, and, and there's no more, how do I put it? benefit to the user really it's it's the benefit is to us so i you know i anyways disappointed very disappointed okay councillor columbus that was my question i just wondered what the coverage was thank you thank you councillor black well it, it is an unfortunate situation and as i wondered uh uh, many groups are, I, I don't know, I guess it's always been part of the, the contract when you rent to, to someone that they require insurance, but I don't think staff were actually um, diligent in saying that, yes, you need to have it, where is it? Because um, I know that one of the groups over at Talbot Gardens, they didn't provide insurance. I know it read the contract and it did say that they must, but for 38 years they didn't. And so all of a sudden this is required and that group is now history. And I don't blame staff for it. It's, uh, I guess, a sign of the times, a litigious society that we live in today, but you've got a number of families now that won't be skating as a family. They won't be getting exercise, they won't be uh, doing some, you know, Canada's pastime, a healthy activity with their, their small kids. And it's not just the insurance that uh, was kind of the final nail in the coffin for them. It was also the rates and uh, uh, continually going up. It's, um, it's, it's a very sad situation, that, uh, and it goes back to what Council Oliver was saying earlier about the, um, you know, the deep pocket syndrome and the suing and the judge, judgment awards being high and, uh, you know, the county always having to, to pay. So, you know, we need to keep the pressure on AMO to act on our behalf about uh, uh, the insurance aspect. and. Um, I know they've tried, and I know the Liberal government has just uh, said no, they're not going to deal with that. You know, they have said it right to us, but they need to deal with that situation because it's just, it's ruining us as a society. Mayor Luke. I'm missing something. Maybe this sounded too good. It's for you to Shelley. Minor hockey industrial leagues, figure skating clubs, junior hockey clubs, they all have liability insurance. They have it, correct? Through the chair, that's absolutely they correct. They have their own because they're on the road, they're traveling, they have their business. So they're not the problem. What I understand is the problem where an individual wants to rent the ice for the family, for a skating party, for friends, whatever. Wants to rent the ice for an hour for their buddies to play some hockey. Right now, Mr. Chair, my understanding is you're not going to be able to use that arena for an hour for your family skate until you contact your insurance company and you get yourself a policy that satisfies our needs. And people are saying, I don't want to go through that hassle. It seems to me, and I'll ask Shelley through the chair, that this is an option whereby you can say to them, we can get the coverage for you. It's an additional fee for that hour or whatever length of it is. And it saves them having the hassle to go out and contact their insurance company and explain 
So I'm wondering what's wrong with at least having that option. If they don't want it and they don't get their own insurance, they don't get the ice rental. I think it's something we should have available. Shelley, am I reading this wrong that this is an option that we will, we have the insurance in place, all you got to do is help pay it through the user fee. Uh, through the chair, you are correct, Mayor Luke. The, the caveat to that is this does not cost the county any money, with the exception of we have to put a deposit down. It's a separate and distinct policy and it will not go against our claims history. So it is only an option. We pay a deposit and then we drill down on that deposit and reconcile on a yearly basis. So there is no cost to the taxpayer for this program. It is up to the individual family or the individual user to either provide their own insurance certificate or yes. opt into this program. So Mr. Chair, we deposit $10,261 to the insurance company annually. I rent the ice. It's an additional $10 if I want the coverage. I pay the 10. The 10 comes off to $10,261. At the end of the year, what isn't used, I guess, can go towards next year's deposit or refund it or whatever, correct? Chair, that is correct. No, I think I got it. Thank you. Okay, before we continue, I've just been handed a, a small correction to that figure on page 91. If you look under your recommendations, there is a a dollar figure that has been changed to one million four hundred and forty nine thousand and thirteen dollars you got that mayor Luke I would move the recommendation with that change to the million four forty nine thirteen and I also would add in my motion that we uh, pursue this deposit for insurance options for our uh, users that wish to use it Okay. And that's no, going to be no cost to the ratepayers whatsoever. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Columbus? All those in favor? Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. We have discussion yet. Divide the question, Councilor Mr. Hyde. Chair, please. Pardon me? Divide the question. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Make it two parts, please, because I'm okay. not supporting the first one. All right. Councillor Brunt. I'm on page 91, and my question is, the, sorry, the 8% tax that we pay, correct, on top of the policy? Am I reading that right? Through the uh, chair, that is correct, but we don't pay tax on the auto policy. No, but the 8% is, is that um, what's the, recovered later on? Do you recover that uh, tax, or is it all? So it's cost of the policy, right? Why don't you put that in there? It's like when you buy something, you pay tax. It's all part of the bill, right? If I may, to counsel, the reason we distinguish in this instance is that for 99% uh, of what we purchase throughout the year, any taxes we pay, we can be we're eligible for reimbursement. This is off the top of my head. The only thing I can uh, recall off the top of my head where we don't receive a rebate on the taxes we pay. Uh, so as opposed to saying it in 99 reports out of 100, we say it for the one where we don't get the money back. Well, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm not going to support the report. It's a case of principle with me. Like We pay a lot of insurance, liability insurance, and we're passing the buck on to these organizations. Maybe we should drop our liability insurance and just say to these people, you cover the liability. We won't do it. Thank you. Anyone else? Mayor Luke has moved. Councillor Columbus has seconded. And I'm going to ask the deputy clerk to read the divided motion. Through the chair, the first part is that the staff report be received for information and that the general insurance program be renewed with the Frank Cowan Company Limited in the amount of approximately $1,449,013 plus applicable taxes. All those in favor? Oh, sorry. A really Council quick one, Mr. Chair, and just for the benefit of any folks that might be watching, this is just a renewal for 2018, is that correct? That's right. Thank you. Anyone else for clarification? 
Call the question. All those in favor? That is carried. Go ahead. The, through the chair, the second part of the question or the motion is, and further that, council approve and implement the facility user program with Frank Cowan Company Limited with a deposit premium of $10,261 plus applicable taxes. Questions, clarification? All those in favor of that? Opposed? That is carried. We are now going to take a 15 minute break after which we'll deal with a deputation. So. Okay. <laughs> Getting there.